In our second example, we are going to take a look at a frame. It might look initially like a truss. However, we've only got three members, ABC, CDE, and then BD connected. And ABC and CDE are multi-force members, whereas BD is the only truss-like member, a two-force member, uh, in the entire system. Pin it A, roll the red E. And so first thing, let's go find reactions. A, X, A, Y over here at the left, E, Y over at the roller. Sum of forces in the X, we get the trivial answer that A, X is equal to 300. Sum of forces in the Y tell us that A, Y, and E, Y are the same magnitude but opposite directions. And then sum of moments about point A. Then we go along and find out that E, Y is 194.8. Note that we've got an equilateral triangle here of two foot on each side so that that uh, moment arm for the 300 is this one and a half hypotenuse times uh, sine of 60. There's your 60 degrees in that little angle. All right, so now to find what we were after here was, of course, finding the force at the pin at C. That means a reminder, a resultant force, not a CX and CY, but both. And so when we draw that free by diagram, we could go to the left or to the right. I'm going to choose the member on the right. Uh, because it's a, got only a roller reaction to deal with. We have the two-force member BD that's in the horizontal direction. I'm going to assume it's pulling to the left. We've got the 300-pound force pulling to the right. The CY is actually quite easy from some of forces in the Y. It's got to be going downwards opposite of EY, so that's 194.8 up there. And then we got to guess at what we think is happening with CX. Now, I would have normally have thought that with the setup, it would be acting to the left. We're going to find out after we work through things it actually acts to the right. It's a little weird. And it's all caused by this reaction down here at the bottom in terms of just this free by diagram. So let's do the equations, though. Even if you're not convinced that's going to be the way it works out, we'll see um, if I guessed right just by working the math. So some of course in the X isn't helpful because we don't know BD, but we can some moments about uh, point D, and let's take clockwise positive and just work our way around the entire system. Um, we've got our CX value right here. It's moment arm. Well, let's see. We're going to be working with a lot of these things here. Let's just draw a little triangle in. There's our 60 degrees. And this whole distance from C to D is 1. So this whole vertical height is going to be then 1 foot times where, sorry, the vertical height is not 1. The hypotenuse from C to D is 1. And we want that opposite, so that's sine of 60 degrees for that one. And then that's the CX part. And let's just mark right around. Then we get plus 300. It's got a hypotenuse of 1 half times sine of 60. And we don't have to do BD. We come down here to the EY. And we get then oh, opposite here, 194.8 times, OK, its hypotenuse is 1. We want this perpendicular distance down here. Right, there's your 60 degrees. Sine of 60 is 1, or rather cosine of 60 is 1 half. So that's just a one half right there. And then we have the 194. You thought I forgot about that one, didn't you? 194.8 for the CY. It's also going to have a one half. Notice we could have grabbed it all at once. We have a force couple between EY and CY at 194.8 times a total distance of one foot. And um, so that would be another way to have gotten there even faster. Set that equal to zero, and you're going to find out that CX is a positive number, meaning we actually did do it in the correct direction, and 74.9 pounds acting to the right. So that means that our resultant force for the at the pin C is going to then be just the square root of the sum of the squares of these two components. And we have that CX was 194.8 squared, 
and then plus or 74.9 square square root and our magnitude is going to be I didn't do that right I don't think well going too fast here plus the 194.8 squared equals the square root 208.7 now we could care about the direction here but gee the which side are we looking at would be a problem here but we have 208.7 as our and rounded up to 209 point pounds and it would be acting sort of in this direction or that direction depending on what side of the pin we're, we were talking about so that because that's sort of arbitrary it doesn't really make any sense to report that direction at the moment um, later on we'll talk about pins that are in single shear or double shear and that would matter for uh, the magnitude will matter for the design of the pin itself